Welcome to section 28 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing Salmonella typhi, which you can see right here. This scene will take place near a Thai restaurant in the mountains of Thailand. As you can see, this Thai restaurant primarily serves salmon to passing travelers. So Thai salmon restaurant for Salmonella typhi. Before we go any further, pay close attention to the background. Notice that we've made the sky pink, which is to help you remember that this is a gram-negative organism. As you can see, now we've added two flags on top of the roof to provide some nice decorations to the building. The flags are here to help you remember that Salmonella typhi is flagellated. This is a gram stain of Salmonella, which we showed in the last video. But again, notice that it appears red or pink under the microscope and is rod-shaped. Also notice that it's a flagellated organism. You can see the flagella, for example, right here. Okay, with this in mind, let's return to the image. Now notice that we've shown some rotten eggs off to the side. Maybe these old eggs are a delicacy, or maybe the workers have been so busy preparing the salmon that they totally forgot about the eggs. Regardless, notice that there is a black appearing smoke rising from the eggs. And just like in the last video, this is here to help you remember that Salmonella typhi produces hydrogen sulfide when placed in TSI agar, which results in a black color. Again, this is an image of TSI agar, and we showed this in the last video, but very briefly, recall that the tube right here contains a black color, which indicates that the organism has reduced sulfur and has therefore produced hydrogen sulfide. Okay, with this in mind, let's return to the image. As you can see, now we've shown green smoke coming out of the chimney. This is to help you remember that one of the virulence factors of Salmonella typhi is an endotoxin. Next, notice that we've shown this traveling hiker guy who's come to the restaurant for some salmon. The Traveler is here to help you remember that Salmonella typhi is commonly associated with a history of traveling. Also pay close attention to his sleeping sack strapped to his back. Just like in our other videos, the sack represents the polysaccharide capsule, and the fact that it has VI written on it should help you remember that Salmonella typhi has what's known as a VI polysaccharide capsule. The V stands for virulence, and VI is simply an antigen within the capsule that protects the organism from antibodies. So Salmonella typhi has a VI polysaccharide capsule. Next, notice that we've shown another chef preparing some salmon next to a few lemons. Just like in the last video, the lemons are here to help you remember that Salmonella typhi is acid labile. So it's inactivated by gastric acid, which means that there must be a large inoculum in order for the pathogens to get past the stomach and invade the gastrointestinal tract. Now we've added a balloon to the scene. Sometimes restaurants like to add balloons and all sorts of extra flashy things to get our attention. So just think of this balloon as an attempt on behalf of the restaurant to attract more customers to their business. The balloon resembles a monocyte, which should help you remember that the immune response to Salmonella typhi is primarily monocytes. Next, notice that we've shown some banana trees next to the restaurant. In our prior videos, banana trees have represented the biliary ducts, or gallbladder. So we've included the banana trees in this image to help you remember that when a patient becomes infected with Salmonella typhi, they may enter a chronic carrier state where the bacteria colonize the gallbladder. This is problematic because the bacteria can proliferate and continue to be excreted in the stool, which poses an infectious risk to other people, especially among those who are food handlers. Now we've shown the hiker guy carrying a lamp. We've used this symbol many times, so you should know by now that this represents fever. In this image, it should help you remember that Salmonella typhi causes typhoid fever. Typhoid fever is a condition characterized by a rash, fever, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and constipation. So hopefully the lamp will help you remember that Salmonella typhi causes typhoid fever. And as the name suggests, one of the features of this condition is a fever. Next, notice that we've shown the owner of this joint who is greeting the traveler. If you look closely at his apron, you'll notice that he has salmon blood splattered all over it. Pretty gross if you ask me. Anyway, these blood stains are here to help you remember that typhoid fever also causes a rash characterized by rose spots on the abdomen. This is an image of the rash associated with typhoid fever. Notice that this patient has flat, rose-colored spots on his neck, shoulders, and chest. For example, right here, right here, and right here. Hopefully you get the idea. As you probably have figured out by now, this restaurant isn't exactly very sanitary. This is why they have an outhouse nearby for all the sick travelers who get sick from eating their food. Unfortunately, the door doesn't work very well, so you can see one poor traveler trying to use the bathroom, and the whole world can see him. This guy sitting on the toilet represents constipation, and the muddy brown river next to the outhouse represents diarrhea. So together, these symbols should help you remember that typhoid fever 
causes abdominal pain, constipation, and diarrhea. Okay, let's move on to discuss the two common types of vaccines for salmonella typhi, a live attenuated vaccine and an intramuscular vaccine. To help you remember the live attenuated vaccine, we've shown a girl smelling flowers next to the live fish sign that's shaped like a syringe. So smelling the flowers for oral and the live fish sign for vaccine. To help you remember the intramuscular vaccine, we've shown a nearby chef injecting the salmon with lemon juice from a syringe. This syringe is being used to inject lemon juice inside of the fish, just as an intramuscular injection is placed underneath the skin. Also notice that the lemon juice has sprayed all the way over to this poor traveler and is drenching his sleep sack. Remember, the sleep sack is a symbol for the VI polysaccharide capsule. So putting these ideas together should help you remember that the intramuscular vaccine contains the VI antigen from the polysaccharide capsule. Okay, let's finish by discussing treatment. Notice that we've shown the hiker guy with his trusty flower staff. Just like in our other videos, this is here to help you remember that salmonella typhi is treated with fluoroquinolones. Finally, notice that we've also shown a trident poking out of his sack. This is here to help you remember that salmonella typhi can also be treated with ceftriaxone. If you compare this to the last video, recall that salmonella gastroenteritis is generally not treated with antibiotics because it's a self-limited condition and giving antibiotics will prolong bacterial shedding in the stool. However, salmonella typhi is definitely treated with antibiotics. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 27-year-old male comes to the clinic due to fever, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. He first noticed the symptoms one week ago after returning from a humanitarian trip to Nepal. Physical examination reveals a temperature of 38.5 degrees Celsius, an erythematous maculopapular rash on his abdomen, and diffuse abdominal tenderness upon palpation. Blood and stool cultures are pending. The patient is most likely at risk of developing A. Continued fecal bacterial shedding B. Rapid resolution of his symptoms without antibiotic administration C. Worsening of the rash, which may involve the hands and palms or D hemolytic uremic syndrome. Okay, there are three key elements from the question stem that should have clued you in on the fact that this patient has typhoid fever. First, he has gastrointestinal problems, including abdominal pain and diarrhea. Second, he has a recent travel history to a developing country. And finally, he has a maculopapular rash on his abdomen. These three findings are classic for typhoid fever. So with this in mind, the correct answer is A, continued fecal bacterial shedding. From the image, recall that the banana trees right here are here to help you remember that when a patient becomes infected with salmonella typhi, they may enter a chronic carrier state where the bacteria colonize the gallbladder. If this happens, the bacteria can proliferate and continue to be excreted in the stool, so there is continued fecal bacterial shedding. Okay, if we return to the image, you can see that B is incorrect because this is alluding to non-typhoidal species of salmonella, such as salmonella enterica, which is generally not treated with antibiotics because it's a self-limited condition. However, typhoid fever should be treated with antibiotics. So B is incorrect. C is also incorrect because the rash typically lasts for 10 to 14 days and is most commonly distributed on the chest, back, and abdomen, not the hands and palms. Finally, D is incorrect because this is alluding to shigella, and enterohemorrhagic E. coli, which both produce a toxin that ultimately results in damage to the kidneys. We'll talk more about this condition in the next two videos, but for now, just know that D is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is A, continued fecal bacterial shedding. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about salmonella typhi.